Hi everyone, this is Cody W3AMG with Bridgecom Systems and today uh, on this live stream we're going to be showing you the brand new Anytone 578 uh, UV3 Plus radio. Uh, so this is an awesome radio similar to the previous 578 but it's got some really cool new additions. Uh, so we're going to be showing you a basic setup, how to get it working and then also uh, at the end we're going to demo Airband which is really neat and in fact it's pretty easy to set up on this uh, Airband Receive. So thank you all for attending. We'll go ahead and do some shout outs real quick. Uh, let's see who we have in the house today. Oh, I saw Ron, KC0QVT, awesome. Glad, glad, you, glad you could make it, Ron. Robert Miller, KJ4NLP. Uh, let's see, who else do we have? Randy, K6YFE, good morning from Cottonwood, Arizona. Let's see. Jim Carr. KC4MHH, Gainesville, Florida. Good morning, Jim. Thank you for attending. Let's see. Aaron in 4 ary Awesome. Glad to have you here, Aaron. Let's see. Philip, KG9. Oops, went off the screen. Robert, KD9STA. Let's see. Who do I hope? Oh. Shane, KD7ZYN, John, K1WDZ, Dave, K9KMY, I believe, Pete, KN8PPY, let's see, we have an Anthony, KK4UCG. Good morning, Anthony. Well, thank every thank you all for attending. Uh, certainly wouldn't be possible without you. Uh, hopefully, you can learn something from this today. Uh, that's what these are all about. Uh, you know, helping each other out in the ham radio community. So, if you know anyone who's, uh, you know, wanting to learn about radio, how to set up their radio, send them this way. Uh, we'll we'll show them how it works. So, anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Before that, uh, just want to announce we are doing a giveaway live in this stream today. Uh, we're going to give away a brand new Anytone. 878 plus radio. Uh, so you do have to be present to win. So make sure you, you enter the giveaway. Um, and at the end of this, we will draw one lucky winner to win this radio right now today. Uh, but if you're not present to win, uh, we will pick another winner. So make sure you guys stick around until then. Awesome. So let's go ahead and get started. So we have the new radio here. One of the ways you can tell it's different is just the, the faceplate. It's got a nice little bezel around the screen. Um, so the, I guess the main benefits of this radio, there's a couple real big benefits that, that are awesome. Uh, this one now supports the 500,000 digital contact list capacity. Um, so you're not limited by a, a smaller contact list like some of the older radios. Uh, this is going to hold the entire digital contact list and uh, you know, more. For, as, is that list is constantly growing, uh, but 500,000 is a lot. So you will be set for a, a good period of time with this radio. And then one of the other really neat features, it now has airband receive. Uh, so you can actually listen to your local air traffic, which is really neat. I was just trying it out earlier this morning. Uh, it, it, it was so cool being able to hear the, the air traffic on the tower. Uh, so we'll try that out. Don't know if we'll hear any just because it's, you know, you don't always have air traffic, um, but we'll see what we can get. So let's go ahead and do a kind of a basic setup of it. So first we need to find all the information that we want. So we're going to do that here real quick. Uh, so let's jump over to a computer. I'm going to open up a web browser. Do that here really quick. Perfect. And first thing I'm going to do is find a local repeater. So we're going to go to repeaterbook.com in this case. Actually here, I don't know if I don't have a pen. You, you could, would it be possible to get a pen, Dylan, real quick? Don't have my notepad with me here today, but we'll make do. So when you're at Repeater Book, uh, you want to go to North American Repeaters. Thank you, sir. Uh, North American Repeaters or wherever you're located. And then at that point, uh, scroll down and find your location. So in this case, we're in Missouri. So we're going to click on Missouri. And then I'm going to look for a DMR repeater. I know the local one here is DMR, uh, but you can look for whatever, whatever you're interested in. And for those of you who have you know, been to these streams before, we've covered this before, uh, but we'll continue to cover this because there's always new people you know, wanting to learn about this, getting engaged with radio, uh, and we're here to help them. 
Uh, we will do some streams on some you know, more advanced topics as well. So at this point, uh, you can find, scroll down until you find a repeater in your area. Uh, in this case, I already know what I'm looking for, so I'm just going to do a control F and search for, I guess it's under KCI in this case, the one up in Trimble. So it's just a little bit further north from us here. So go ahead and click on that frequency. Perfect. So now we have a downlink and an uplink frequency. Uh, so basically, the, the best way to describe this, the uh, uplink is going to be going up to the repeater, and downlink is going to be going from the repeater down to your radio. So typically, repeaters or antennas are always on a tower, you know, somewhere in the air up, and uh, handhelds or mobiles or whatever, you're typically on the ground. Uh, you know, you generally don't fly around with your radio unless you're in an airplane, but that's not what we're doing here. Um, so but that's a really easy way to keep track of your uplink and downlink frequencies. So let's go ahead and take some notes here. So our uh, downlink is 444-4625. So 444-4625, perfect. And then our uplink is 449-4625. Uh, Perfect. And then there's a little bit more information. We need the color code. So in this case, that is four. So we have our color code of four. And then there's a little bit more info we'll need, which is the time slot. Uh, now, typically, your repeater will tell you that. Not all of them have that, so you may have to try one or the other. Or you know, if, if it's in a local area, just talk to your club, see what they use. In this case, it tells us use time slot one for all other Brandmeister talk groups. Uh, so that is what we're looking for. So we're going to use time slot one. Perfect. So time slot one, we are all set there. And so we have our repeater information now. A uh, little bit more info we need. So let's go ahead and find our own info. So I know my call sign is W3AMG. Uh, but, you know, if I don't remember my DMR ID off the top of my head, I might have to go find that out as well. And to be honest with you, I don't have that memorized. <laughs> so let's go to radioid.net. And this is a great resource to find that information. Uh, you know, just out of curiosity, say in the comments, how, how many of you guys have your uh, radio ID already? I know there's a lot of folks who do, but I know there's quite a few people who, who haven't gotten that yet. Uh, you know, how many of you guys have your DMR ID? It's real easy to get. Um, and, you know, we have a video that shows you how to get it. You just have to have your license and you basically, it's totally free. You can get your DMR ID and start talking on DMR. So we're going to go into the database here and look up our own. So go to D DMR user ID search. And then scroll down to uh, call sign, you want to type your call sign in there, or, you know, if you're looking for someone else's, you may not have all their info, so you can, uh, you know, sort by a variety of different methods. Uh, so we're going to type in the, I, the, the call sign, so W3AMG. Perfect, just like that. And we can scroll down, and I see my ID is 315. Perfect. So we have that information now. Uh, now at this point, we just need a little bit more info. Whatever talk groups we want to program into this radio, uh, we want to collect that data. So let's go ahead and look for, let's see, Brandmeister talk groups, and I typically use this one, this first one here, the Bram, uh, the pistar.uk website for looking for my talk groups, but there's a variety of different lists out there. So let's see here. Uh, what do we want to program in? We can do the Parrot just to make sure it's working, so let's search for that. So just do a, once you get to this list, what you can do to easily find different talk groups is just do a Control F, or if you're on a Mac, um, Command F. Now, if you're on the Mac, you won't actually be able to use the programming software, but you can do it just on the radio alone. So 
Uh, you can certainly do your research work on a different kind of computer. So let's search for Parrot. Perfect, here we go. So the Parrot is 9990. So write that down. Nine 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 zero, and then how about the? Uh, we'll, we'll need the disconnect. Disconnect. Uh, disconnect is always going to be talk group four thousand. Uh, so let's go ahead and put that in here. There we go. Perfect. We have our disconnect, and then what else? Let, let's go ahead and throw in the. Missouri talk group. Perfect. Uh, let's see here. A lot of different, there's quite a few different. There we go. There's the, the just standalone Missouri talk group. So 3129. Perfect. So we have that. So we have all of our information collected. So at this point, uh, we can get to work programming. Now there is another site uh, that we can go to if you want to download the entire digital contact list. Um, just go to, uh, th there's a lot of different places you can get this. This is a place that I found to, to get mine and it's been working well. Uh, KF5IW.com. Uh, they, they actually provide a, a pretty, uh, you know, consistently updated list that's made for these Anytone radios, which is awesome. So let me see here. Contact list download. Perfect. This is what we're looking for. So this is for, we includes the 578. Now there's a few different versions. Um, I like to just get the, the biggest one there. And we will save that to our desktop. Perfect. Just like that, we are all set. Uh, so I believe we have all the information we need now. So let's go ahead and uh, install the software and we'll get this radio set up. So I've already downloaded the software from our website for the radio. At this time there's just one version of, of software for this radio. Uh, but if there's more you can always check to see what version your radio is and then download the correct one. So I'm going to install it real quick. We'll click on the CPS and then double click on that uh, setup. It should be an application file. And then click on the more info and just run anyway. And we'll go through this real quick. Just say yes. And we are going to be taking questions, guys. Uh, so if you have any questions, post them in here. Uh, we'll do questions here in a little bit once we've done our demos. Uh, or if we have a little bit of time, maybe we'll things are importing. So uh, get your questions out there. We will uh, answer as many of them as possible. I know there's a lot of people, so we, we may not be able to get to every single one. Uh, but we are certainly going to do our best to cover as many as we can. And if you have more questions, we're always available to, get, to talk to. Uh, you can give us a call, 816-532-8451 and press 2. Uh, there's we always have people, you know, during business hours standing by and, and sometimes, you know, once in a while you even get someone uh, pick up after hours. So, you know, great opportunity to learn more about your radio or get yourself set up with another radio or, or a, your first radio. Uh, we really would love to help you guys. So, let's go ahead and install this. Uh, just click on, on Browse, and then we don't want to add this to our, our D drive. We actually want to change that to C. So click on Browse, and then scroll down, let's see, scroll up, and then click on the Windows C, and click OK. Perfect. Now we are going to install that on the C drive. There we go. And next, Anytone. I'm going to create a desktop icon, and click Next, and finally Install. <clears throat> Perfect, there we go. We are all set, so we'll open that up real quick. Now at this point, let's go ahead and we've got our radio turned on. I've already reinitialized this, so it's just like a brand new radio. So we'll confirm and I'm gonna plug it in with the programming cable. So plug one side into your computer and then plug the other side into the radio itself. Open up this little port on the side here. Make sure you guys can see that and go ahead and plug that cable in. Perfect. There we go. We can see the computer recognized it. Uh, we'll make sure it shows up here. Click on the COM port button up here at the top. 
There we go, COM3, the computer sees it. Now let's go ahead and read from the radio. So click on the button left of the COM port up there, and we'll read from the radio. I'm just going to read the other data and click OK. Perfect, there we go. We are all set there. Um, so at this point, we can start adding our, our information to our code plug. So what I'm going to do is first create our repeater channel here. Um, so in this case, we're doing so the, the downlink. Uh, downlink is going to be going down to the radio. So the radio, that's going to be its receive frequency. So 444.4625, and then transmit. That's our uplink, so 449.4625, perfect. And then we'll call this one, uh, let's make this one the parrot. Perfect. Uh, digital, uh, we probably want some good power just because we're talking to a local repeater, so I'm going to go ahead and just leave that at high power here. Uh, in fact, we'll, we'll bump that up to turbo just in case, just so we don't have any troubles. And let's see here. Uh, although we, I'm going to leave that at high as we have the antenna somewhat close here and, and we're, we're close enough to the repeater, we shouldn't have any trouble. Uh, color code, we know that is 4, so we're going to set our color code to 4. Time slot, we know that is meant to be time slot 1. Perfect. And there is one more thing we want to make sure of. Uh, the DMR mode should be set to repeater, which it is, uh, but sometimes that doesn't show up that way. Uh, so you definitely want to make sure that's set correctly first. Uh, so we can say OK. Uh, now I'm going to duplicate these, so we'll, we'll just do a right click on it and then copy. And then I can do a Control V to paste a couple more of those in here. And we'll just give them names. So this one can be Missouri. Perfect. And then we'll give this one a different name. And this one can be, uh, what was our other, our disconnect. Perfect. Now we do actually have to change the contact uh, for this to work. So let's go ahead and create our, our talk groups real quick. Um, so if we go to digital, open up that digital tab. Uh, there's the contact list. Now we need to go to contact slash talk groups, the second one down here. And we are going to create some talk groups. So let's go ahead and create one. Uh, we'll do the Missouri one first. So Missouri. And this we want to be a group call. And we'll add the number. So that is 3129. Perfect. There we go. We are all set. Now let's do another one here real quick. This one can be the parrot. And that actually has to be a private call. Uh, group call does, does work, but you probably want your parrot to be a private call. Uh, go ahead and click OK. Oops. What happened there? OK. Make that a private call. And I must not have put a number. 9990. And OK. Perfect. And then let's go ahead and add our uh, disconnect. We'll make that a, a, a group call, I believe, and then click OK. Oops. Got to put the number. Yeah, make sure you put the number in there, folks. That'll help. <laughs> Perfect. Group call, and that is always going to be talk group 4000. Perfect. We are all set there. Um, now, if we want to import our digital contact list, we can do that. We'll do that last just so we can uh, go through this kind of all in order here. Um, so we've got our channels. Now we want to come back over here and make these a, a different talk group. So, <coughs> excuse me, go ahead and double click on one. Now this one is, we know it's the parrot, so we're going to change it uh, to be the parrot. So just click on that contact and then double click on that parrot and then say okay. Perfect. We're going to do the same thing for, actually Missouri's correct. We're going to do the same thing for the disconnect. We'll just change this over to the other talk group we created. Just like that. Perfect. We're in good shape here. Awesome. So there we go. Uh, now we do need to create a zone. 
Uh, now, we, it looks like we already have one. Um, so I'm just going to utilize the zone that's already here. Um, in fact, well, let, let's create another one real quick. We'll, we'll do that. So we'll create a new zone. Um, KCI. KCI repeater. And then uh, we'll add these different channels to it. So just make sure you actually add them to your zone or else nothing will happen. And let's make the primary channel the parrot and the secondary the disconnect. Um, there we go. Click OK. Perfect. A couple more things. Um, there is a setting you will want to change. It'll make it a lot easier to use for you. Uh, that way, instead of displaying the frequency, it actually displays the name because otherwise all these channels are going to look the same, the di digital channels, because they're all talking on the same frequency, uh, but we want to see the different talk groups. So go to, uh, let's see, work mode, and then down here where it says, let's see here, uh, display mode frequency, we want to change that to channel. And then personally, I also like to uh, turn off the subchannel mode. Now, this is a good time to adjust any other settings that you want to. Um, we're going to be okay for here. Should be good like that. Uh, now, if you want to make the screen look cool like this radio, uh, it's very simple to do so. But we're going to jump over that today just because we have quite a bit to cover here. Uh, now, let's go ahead and input our uh, radio ID and our call sign. So go ahead and go to radio ID list. Uh, now here, we need our number. So I know that mine is 315-215-2688. Uh, Perfect. And then my radio name. I typically do my uh, name and then call sign. Perfect. We are good to go there. I believe that is all we need. Uh, now, if we want to import that digital contact list, this will be the time to do so. So you can go up to Tool, uh, Import, Oops. and Digital Contact List. And we'll go to our desktop here real quick. It doesn't look like it's, maybe we, we may need to grab that other file. So let's, let's go back to our desktop. And that contact list we downloaded is a zip file. So just right click on it. And then uh, extract all. We'll extract it here real quick. Perfect. So now we have the file. So we can go back in the CPS and Tool, Import, Digital Contact List. And guys, if this is too fast for any of you, uh, we are actually recording this. So you can go through it again. Uh, you can speed up or slow down the video. Uh, and you can also just pause the video. You know, that's what I like to do if I'm learning something new. I'll watch a video, you know, they'll go over a step. I'm like, oh, I didn't quite catch that. So, or, or I got it, but I can't do it as fast as them. So I'll stop the video. I'll, I'll complete that step and then I'll play the video again and okay, Okay, great, another nugget of information Stop. I'll do that. A uh, great way to follow along because we all work at different speeds. You know, if I, if I go super slow, some of you guys are going to be happy, some are not. Vice versa, if I go real fast, uh, same thing. So I'm going to try to go at a, just a reasonable pace for everyone. But if it's too fast or too slow, you can speed up or slow down the video or, you know, stop and start the videos. Just thought I should throw that out there. Uh, so hopefully we can, can satisfy everyone as much as possible here. Um, so. Let's go ahead and find that digital contact list. Let's see here. Oh, we're, I think we're in the wrong folder. So we'll go to our desktop. There we go. Perfect. Contacts. That is what we're looking for. So go ahead and open that. <clears throat> now that's going to, I think, looks like we'll have to click on the actual import button. Oops. If we can get to it here. Um, well, that's an interesting. That's an interesting thing. Let's see if we, maybe I can tab down to it. Yeah, I don't know what button I clicked on there. I don't think it was the right one. So we'll try that again. Um, occasionally, you can run into a, a, an issue. This may maybe something to figure out a good solution for. Um, we can certainly help you with that but where the, the buttons are actually off screen. I'm running in, into that here, but uh, we'll see if we can find that right button real quick. So we'll import that again. And uh, just, I'm just gonna tab down to, let's see. No, 
Oh, not that one. Well, interesting. So those buttons are, are actually off the screen. So we've run into a, a slight hiccup here, but nevertheless, let me see if there's another way. Just temporarily, I'm going to change my screen resolution real quick if, if I can do that. Let's see here. Uh, see if we can get around this problem real quick. If not, we can certainly do this without that digital contact list being imported. Not a big deal. Um, let me see here. We'll display. We'll change that resolution. Bump it up a little bit. There we go. Keep changes. Let's go back over to our CPS tool. Imports. Yep, there we go, we have our buttons now. So if that ever happens to you guys, uh, you know, this is a real kind of small resolution computer, an older HP computer here. Uh, great little computer for what we use it for, but the display resolution is a little bit smaller than some computers. Uh, so you may have this problem too. Just go ahead and, and go change your resolution uh, for, for that if you run into it um, and don't have a bigger display standing by. Uh, we can get around the problem that way. So. Uh, we'll go into our import our digital contact list here real quick. Perfect. And then click import. Just like that. And you may also be able to tab down to it if you know where it is. Uh, I just didn't know how far it was. I think if I'd done one less tab, I, I would have been on the right button. So there we go. Now while that's going on, I'm going to change my screen back to, to normal. Perfect and keep changes and then we'll perfect we are set uh, so we've got that importing now at this point we're gonna we're gonna let that import do we have any questions now keep in mind guys we're not done quite yet uh, we're gonna import this and then show you how it works and more importantly we're gonna demo the airband receive show you how that is to set up it's really easy it's not uh, not gonna be quite as complicated as this uh, but hopefully this has not been too complicated for you guys either. Just a little bit of time to set it all up. Um, now we do also offer plug and play packages. So if you guys want to just jump ahead of all this and be on the air talking, you know, in no time and, and five minutes flat, you can get a plug and play package where we do all of the leg, leg work, you know, set it up, uh, program in your frequencies, talk groups, digital contact list, everything like that ready to go. So when you get it out of the box, uh, you literally plug it in and you are on the air. Uh, you know, not for everyone, but a lot of people more and more are liking to, to be able to just uh, spend the extra money and, you know, save themselves a lot of time. Uh, but for those of you who like to actually dive headfirst into it and uh, do all of it yourself, these are great for you, this resource. So, regardless, a great way to learn about your radio. Any questions here while we wait? What are the radios behind the table? That's a great question. Uh, what are the radios behind the table? So, uh, can't talk about these too much, but these are a new commercial line of radios we're coming out with. Um, so, that is what those are. Do all these radios do regular FM as well as DMR? Um, so, these radios, uh, regular F, yeah, uh, absolutely. So, these will do DMR, they'll do regular FM, you know, 2 meter, 70 centimeter analog, just your like a typical, you know, dual band radio. Absolutely, they work great for that. Um, I'm assuming you weren't talking about music FM, but if you were, they actually do that as well. You can tune into your local uh, radio stations as well. I see a, I see a good question here, actually. Uh, will you demo the APRS functions uh, receive? Uh, so we've actually done a video on that on the, the new 878UV2 radio, demoing the APRS receive and transmit. Uh, we'll, we've done a live stream on that, but that's a great idea. We should do one with the 5782, but that takes probably a, another live stream, so we'll have to do that in the future. But if you're curious how it works, go check out the one for the 878. Any more questions here? Does this radio get National Weather Service received? It does, absolutely. Um, it is really easy to set that up. Oh, here we go, import complete. Uh, the National Weather Service, uh, basically you would just create a zone. What I typically do is create a zone, the NOAA weather, 
and I just import all of those frequencies in there, give them a name, and then I'll also, I will also tick the, the box to prohibit transmitting, that way I don't actually transmit on them, and it, it's really that simple. Uh, in fact, the super code plug that we offer includes all of them. So we are good to go here. Now we have to actually uh, write this code plug to the radio. So let's make sure we're set. We've got the zone. Everything should be in good shape. Let's go ahead and write it to the radio. So make sure our radio is plugged in and turned on. We've got it in our COM port. So go ahead and click on the write to radio button. Now at this point, I'm going to check that digital contact list. Uh, now, if you already have it in your radio and you're not importing a new one, I would definitely not check that button because it takes longer. Um, just check the, the other data. Other data will work fine with the radio. You can import little changes, you know, channels, stuff like that. Uh, the only time you want to check this one is if you're doing the actual contact list, updating it, adding it, or, you know, changing it. Uh, if you're not messing with it, then I wouldn't check the button because it will definitely increase your time. So, let's go ahead and do that this time and we'll wait for it. More questions? All right, can you put the radio in the charger and transmit while it's charging? Great question. <clears throat> I assume you're talking about the handheld radio. Um, so it is not recommended to transmit on the radio while it is in the charger. Uh, definitely, definitely not. Uh, it's in the user manual. It's not a recommended thing. Uh, can't say I'd recommend it. If you're wanting to use it, you know, just constantly on the go, they actually make battery eliminators. So they replace the battery with a, a thing that can plug into like a cigarette lighter outlet or uh, you could hook it up to a power supply that way as well. It just runs off 12 volts. Uh, that way you can use your radio without having to, you know, constantly charge the battery. Although these radios do have really good battery life. But if you want to use it continuously, get yourself a battery eliminator. What is the battery life on the handhelds? Battery life on the handhelds, well, I believe they have, I mean, it's a 3,100 milliamp hour battery, so, you know, probably about 30 hours, and, and that's, that's realistic. I've gotten a lot of use out of mine. Um, I mean, I, that's a good, I, I usually get a few weeks out of mine before charging it, uh, and it gets used quite a bit. Now, obviously, the more you transmit on it, the more it's going to go down. Uh, it's a little bit give or take. It depends what you use it for and how much you use it. Uh, it's hard to give you an exact uh, estimate, but they do have really great battery life. Now, I like to have a couple batteries. I have one on the charger and then one on the radio. That way, whenever it comes time to change the battery, instead of having to wait to charge it, I just swap it out and then I'm good for another you know, 30 hours of use. How does the digital audio quality compare to the analog radio? Yeah, great question. Uh, so digital radio is definitely more clear uh, you know, it's more like a, a phone call, if you will, but which is cool because it's still using radio waves. You know, you're still going over the radio, you know, especially talking on a local repeater here. Yes, we're able to link to, <coughs> excuse me, uh, people around the country, uh, but we're still just talking to the local repeater, and digital is really clear. It, it's, a, it's a great thing. What is the best time to call for support from the techs? Best time to call for support? Great question. Um, so if you need any support, you know, if you have an existing radio order, um, the best time is, is between probably 9 a.m. and, and 4.45 p.m. Central Time. Uh, that's when they're, they're in-house. We've got people standing by ready to help you. Uh, we do have some morning meetings. That's why it's 9 a.m. Uh, but you're certainly welcome to call and leave a message or, you know, probably the best way to get support is to create a ticket and then we can get back to you that way. But if you do want to call in and, and talk to us, you can certainly do that as well. Um, and then if you have questions about, you know, getting the radio, uh, any, any time, you know, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., uh, give us a call or, or even after leave a message if we're not there, we'll get back to you. Uh, just 816-532-8451 and press 2. Please explain the difference between PTT channels and static channels. Uh, PTT channels and static channels. Um, that's a great question. I'm not personally 100% sure what, what that is. Uh, I mean, PTT is usually push to talk. I'm, I'm not familiar with what you're talking about, but we can certainly uh, provide you some more information on that. Uh, you know, give, give us a call afterwards and we'll get you some more info on that. Can any of the handhelds be upgraded to receive airband? 
So unfortunately, at this time, none of the handhelds will do the, the air band receive. Uh, cool, cool perk of the 578, it, it is really neat. Can the radio be TX expanded for Mars, military affiliate radio system operations? Uh, so these radios, uh, the, the, way, the way they're set up, we do not support, uh, you know, setting it up for, for Mars. This is an amateur radio, uh, for, you know, for, for amateur purposes. It's got the 220 band in there, too. Uh, now, if you want the commercial radio, uh, you could get one of our commercial radios. Now, they will have the VFO locked out, and they won't have 220, but we do have commercial versions of, of these um, 578 radios as well. Is it available to get radios with longer battery life? Radios with longer battery life. Um, so these actually are the longer battery life battery. Um, they make a smaller battery, which uh, we've honestly just never carried because why would, why would you want to have the smaller battery? Um, that was our thought process, but they do make a smaller battery, but this is the big one. We, we provide you with the, the largest battery they make for them, uh, which it will give you really good battery life. You won't be disappointed. Can a private call be made without regard to a talk group or zone? It can, actually. Uh, so DMR, it, it, one of the, actually just did this this morning, a cool feature of it is you can basically, in, in your uh, radio, you can put someone else's DMR ID in there, and if they're on a repeater or have been recently, or if they have their hotspot turned on at, at any time, you can basically just transmit to that DMR ID, and it will automatically pop up on that person's radio regardless of what talk group they're on. So you can absolutely do that. What is the antenna connector on the HT for the upgraded antenna? Sure, yeah, so the, these HTs, they have, I'll turn it off real quick so we don't accidentally have any trouble. Um, one screw it, so these are an SMA style connector. Um, so the radio is SMA male, the antenna is SMA female. Uh, so you make sure you get yourself an SMA female antenna if you are, are upgrading it. Now we have a variety of options. Uh, the Nagoya antennas, if you're going to get a Nagoya, uh, probably recommend the, the big one, the, either the 771 or the 320A. Uh, they, I think they all cost about the same, so I just go for the bigger one. And then, uh, you know, if, if you're interested in a mag mount antenna, we have a BCA300 that works perfectly with it. You put it on the top of your car, and then it's got the feed line built in, and that will screw right into your radio. No adapters required, and, and that works great. I actually have one of them myself. Is the CPS software going to get easier to use over time, like being able to import local repeaters from repeater book? Uh, that's a great question. So the, the CPS... Um, you know, it is getting better over time. Uh, hopefully we'll continue to see that get better. Uh, we're constantly, you know, offering more information on how to make it better. Um, so you never know what we'll see. Uh, right now, you know, you do have to import all of your information. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what we see down the road, but that's a great idea. Can the same CPS be used for the 878 and the 8782? So it cannot. You definitely want to get the uh, correct CPS for your radio. Uh, the older 57A and this 57A are different. Uh, so just make sure you go to our website, click on the support tab, and then find the correct software for your radio. Can you explain why there are different talk groups for Parrot on BM and other networks? That's a great question. Uh, so different talk groups on, on, on uh, Brandmeister and, and other I said that wrong, different parrots on uh, different networks, such as like Brandmeister and uh, the other networks out there. I, I'm not sure why there's different parrots. Um, I know that the Brandmeister parrot is 9990. Uh, beyond that, you know, every, probably the other networks need to have a parrot too. Um, as to why they're not all the same, I, I couldn't tell you that. Great question though. There we go, perfect, right data completed. Um, so let's go ahead and click OK here. And we should be set. Now let's go ahead and try this out real quick. So I have my antenna plugged in. I've got the radio plugged in and turned on. Oh, we should be able to unplug our programming cable. We'll set this aside here. Perfect. There we go. So I'm going to change our zone. Now you can do that with the button on the, uh, the microphone here. 
believe so. Let's see. I forgot how to change. There we go. Zone up and zone down. Perfect. There we go. There's our KCI repeater. And I uh, should have done this in the settings, but before this gets too annoying, I'm going to go into menu and uh, turn off our beep. So settings, uh, radio set, and let me see here, key tone, and we'll turn that off. There we go. That, that way we don't have to listen to it. Perfect. So we're on the Parrot. Let's see if it works. Testing one, two, three. This is W3AMG. Make sure I turn up our volume here. Let's see, we'll try that again here, real quick. Testing one, two, three. This is W3AMG. Perfect. There we go. We've got it set up and working. Um, so there we go. We've got the parrot working on this radio. Uh, let's try the Missouri Talk Group real quick. Now, if you switch from a, like the parrot, it's not going to be a big deal, but if you switch from like the Missouri Talk Group, let's say to the Texas Talk Group, you will want to key up that disconnect in between. Uh, not essential for what we're doing here, but just to demonstrate it, let me show you how it works. So we'll key it up real quick. And you hear the message, not linked. That means you're disconnected. So perfect. Let's go ahead and switch over here. So we'll change that to the Missouri Talk Group. See if we can hit anyone on there. This is W3AMG trying out the Missouri Talk Group. Just got my new radio set up. Anyone out there? N8 CQV, thank you for coming back to me. Where, where are you located today? Okay, uh, call, call again as N8 CQD as in dog. I'm actually in Greenville, North Carolina. I'm watching your broadcast and I'm learning something every time I listen to it. Awesome. Well, glad to hear it. Yeah, that, that's what amateur radio is all about, helping people. So uh, glad I could be of assistance to you. Uh, what, what kind of radio are you running? It sounds great. Okay, Cody. Uh, I'm using the Anytone 878UV. Uh, I uh, got it probably back around November of last year, and I love it. Uh, I use the HD a lot. Awesome. Glad to hear it. Glad you enjoy it. So, yeah, a lot of fun radio. I'm, I'm having a lot of fun with it every day. Uh, trying out the, the air band recently on this 578. It's been a lot of fun too. It, it's, uh, you know, MCI, this airport, there's quite a bit of activity here. They're actually opening up a, a new terminal. So uh, it, it's pretty cool. I'm, I'm enjoying it more and more every day. So glad you are a part of it. Uh, this is W3AMG uh, clear on your final. There we go. How cool is that? You heard it from the man, N8CQD. So awesome. Well, thank you for coming back to me there. That was great talking to one of you guys out there. Uh, it seems like every time I, I actually hit one of the, the, the viewers, so that, that's pretty neat. Uh, anyway, so there we go. We've got our radio working. 
Uh, looks like the, the antenna must have knocked out one of our lights here. Uh, so we are good to go there. Let's go ahead and try out the air band real quick. So to do this, uh, now we do have show notes as well. So if you guys uh, have questions about it, make sure you read the show notes. Uh, that way you can see exactly how to do it, uh, you know, and follow along. They're kind of a, a written guide. I know some people like audio, some people like video, some people like written. So hopefully we can try to, to hit every single one of those. So let's go ahead and go to menu. And then we'll scroll down to settings. Perfect. We can make sure we can see this all right. Yep. And we're going to go to radio set and the other function, other funk. And then we're going to scroll down to AM air slash FM. Perfect. Click on that. This, this time it's number nine. And we're going to change that to AM air A. So this is either going to be your VFO A or VFO B. Perfect. I'll turn my volume down here real quick. So we are set there. And I would also scroll down and set your, let's see if I can read your, um, where is it? Analog squelch level in that same menu. Uh, probably two or three. Uh, one, it seems like it just picks up everything. So I'm going to set mine to two for starters. Uh, but you know, you may find you want to set that to three. Just play around with it. But uh, I have found I do have to change that from one. Whereas on the, uh, the regular, you know, analog repeaters, typically I will keep that at one. I don't, you know, one is about the most I'll do. So there we go. Now uh, for the frequency, uh, you, you have to actually do a little bit of research if you want to get something, or you can just play around with it until you hear something. Uh, I found out the MCI tower, at least from what I believe, is on uh, 128 point, uh, you know, 200. So we'll type that in here, one, two, eight, two, and then hit the pound sign just to complete it. Perfect, there we go. So let's see if we can hear anything real quick. Oh. That's cool. So we heard an airplane. Oh. Looks like they're a little bit too far away to actually make out, uh, but we may be able to hear the tower. And uh, to answer your question, Mike, this is receive only for the air band. It's not actually going to talk on the, on the air band, but it will receive it. So we could, we could see, see there was a, an airplane there. Uh, they're probably, you know, talking to, to the uh, air traffic control. Uh, it seems like where we're at here, we're kind of in a bit of a valley. Uh, we have trouble receiving the planes but I have been able to pretty clearly receive the tower. So uh, we'll leave that running here and see if we can't get a tower reception because it is really neat when we do. But uh, let's go ahead and take some questions at this time. Perfect. There we go. We can hear uh, the air traffic towers real clear. And if you're closer to the activity, the others will be clear too. That's just because we're real far away from them. So how cool is that? We've got air band received. Uh, we're quite a few miles away from the airport uh, in a valley and we're receiving it. So it's a lot of fun. Anyway, I'm going to turn this off for now. Um, but let's do some questions. And remember, if you guys would like to pick up one of these radios or, you know, even if you don't and you just want to learn more about it, give us a call 816-532 eight four five one and press two and uh, we'd love to help you with it so remember also we are giving away one of these radios real soon uh, so make sure you stick around till then you do have to be present to win uh, we're giving one away on this stream right now today uh, so let's see what what other questions we have how do you use the menus to select a contact that's a great question how do you use the menus to select a contact um, I guess I'm not, not sure if that's a talk group or a digital like contact like a person. Uh, if you're wanting to select a, I guess we're in the air band here. I have to, don't know how to get out of that real quick on the 578. Let's see here. So if you want to select a, a contact, what you can do is go down to your, uh, I believe it's under book. And let's, this is, there you go. So you can basically go select your contact. So let me see. 
This may be in the we may be in the wrong section. Let me see if I can. I probably have to turn airband off to do this for you. Let's see. A radio set. Oh, oops. Other function. There we go. We'll turn that off real quick. Perfect. Then go into our menu and uh, let's see, talk group. Um, leave. So if, if you're wanting to look at your talk groups, you can go in the talk group list and get to them that way. Um, now, if you're wanting to select like an actual contact and, and, and like call someone directly, uh, there's a couple different ways you can do that. You can either go into the settings and then uh, radio set and, and you know, program in your, or, or, or channel set, I apologize, settings and then channel set and then uh, program in a, a new contact that way. Or if you have it, your CPS, you can do it in the CPS and then just basically like what we did for the, uh, the Missouri and the disconnect and the parrot, you do it the same way. What is the difference between the 578 UV3 Plus versus the Pro? Great question. So the, the UV3, the older, the Pro model, uh, that one was a great little radio. Now what this one adds on top of it, uh, instead of having the, you know, the 200,000 digital contact list capacity, this radio is going to expand that to 500,000 digital contacts. Now the actual list is just over 200,000 contacts as we saw today. Uh, so you definitely want to have that capability, you know, if you're going to be using this radio for any period of time. Uh, it's got airband receive, which is really neat. That's a lot of fun. And then it also uh, will do APRS receive as well. Uh, so you can actually receive APRS location data. And we have a winner for today's giveaway. Perfect. We have a winner. So uh, one of you lucky people is going to win a brand new Anytone 878 Plus radio right here, right now. So make sure you stick around even after we draw. If, if uh, that person is not here, we will draw another winner. So let's see who it is. The winner is Zach Collins, call sign KE0YMX. KE0YMX. Zach, congratulations. Let's make sure you're in-house. But if you are, you have just won yourself a brand new Anytone 878 Plus radio, as well as that comes with BridgeCom University. So uh, you're going to get all of those over 100 tutorial videos that show you how to use the radio. Uh, congratulations to you. How cool is that? So each and every one of you have the opportunity to learn more about your radios and potentially win yourself a radio every week here at 11 a.m. Central Time. Let's see. Do we have Zach in the house here? It looks like Zach is here. Perfect. Zach, congratulations to you. Uh, you just won yourself a new radio. So hopefully every, uh, every one of you guys learned something. Uh, how cool is that? Yeah, congr congratulate Zach for winning his radio. Uh, that is awesome. So let's go ahead and wrap up here. But I want to thank each and every one of you. You know, it wouldn't be possible without you. Ham radio wouldn't be possible without all of you guys. Uh, you know, that's what makes it fun, the community. So. That's it for now. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. If you know anyone who wants to learn more about the radio, send them our way. Anyway, this is Cody, W3AMG73.